Hi, this presentation briefly reviews the key concepts and main achievements of our publication titled Finite Element Microstructural Analysis of Thermal Damage in High Volume Fraction RVE of Particle Reinforced Refractory Composites published in IMECI 2019 conference proceedings. As explained in previous videos, we designed and manufactured three refractory composite types that contain different volume fractions of zirconia bubbles, zirconia solid particles, and silicon carbide solid particles dispersed in an alumina matrix. These refractory composites are labeled as castable zirconia, castable silicon carbide, and castable silicon carbide zirconia, or for short, CS, CZ, and CSZ. It was also shown how their thermomechanical properties were measured experimentally, and using thermal shock indices, their thermal shock resistance is characterized. In the present work, we developed a methodology for predicting thermal shock damage in these refractory composites using finite element method. We start by developing concrete damage plasticity, or CDP model, in Abacus. Then this material model is applied to the representative volume element, or RVE, of the microstructure of the three refractory composite types. Next, thermomechanical boundary conditions are applied to the RVE, and after running the finite element simulations, predictions of this model are analyzed and compared to experimental findings. Finally, using the same technique, the effect of volume fraction and size distribution of the inclusions is investigated. The CDP model assumes that the main two failure mechanisms are compressive crushing and tensile cracking. Compressive crushing in turn can be described by a stress-strain relation. However, the tensile cracking should be defined either through a post-failure stress-strain relation, which for large unreinforced areas will lead to unreasonable mesh sensitivity, or through fracture energy cracking criterion. This criterion can be invoked by either providing the value for fracture energy or by inputting the values for stress and displacement directly. And we chose the latter to avoid excessive stiffness. We simulate a macro scale displacement control three point bending test and extract the value of displacement versus total reaction force at the top middle section of the simulation. Then, through trials, the numerical and experimental findings are matched. Finally, we obtain a set of values which reasonably describes the post-failure behavior of the material due to tensile cracking. We can now implement this model in microscale, assuming that the only mode of failure in microscale is tensile cracking of the matrix. We used Python programming language in conjunction with Simulia Abacus to create the RVs of these materials. We start by creating solid silicon carbide inclusions, then zirconia bubbles are added which are hollow inside. After that, solid zirconia particles are inserted and finally we create the matrix which encompasses all particles. This leaves us with a periodic microstructure. We use this technique to create three realizations for each of the three different composite types being studied. Also, we implement the realistic size distribution of inclusions. To apply periodic boundary conditions, two dummy nodes are defined on the top and right side of the RVE. Next, the nodes on the left and right side of the RVE are connected to the right dummy node through this set of constraint equations. Similarly, the nodes on the top and bottom side of the RV are connected to the top dummy node through this set of constraint equations. As a result of these constraints, once the temperature is raised, the RV will deform periodically. As for thermal boundary conditions, we assume a uniform temperature raise that changes linearly with time up to 900 degrees centigrade. Analysis of the three composite types shows that plastic strains are often formed around inclusions or between them, 
and advance into the bulk of the matrix as well. The values shown in the contour plot legend can guide us as to what elements have comparatively experienced the largest deformations. Elements with a value for plastic strain larger than zero have a compromised tensile strength and are considered yielded elements and thus indicate a microcrack initiation criteria. These simulations show the fundamental difference in the initiation and growth of plastic strain depending on the type of the inclusions present in the matrix as schematically demonstrated here. Higher CT of zirconia inclusions compared to the matrix leads to hoop stresses in the matrix and thus plastic strains tend to grow into the matrix radially. In contrast, plastic strains grow tangential to adjacent silicon carbide inclusions due to their CTE value being lower than the matrix, which causes compressive stresses in the surrounding matrix and ultimately tensile stresses in the matrix sandwiched between the two silicon carbide inclusions. Cumulative percentage of yielded elements throughout the heating simulation can be extracted and plotted versus temperature. Notice that in CZ and CSZ simulations, which have higher volume fraction of zirconia inclusions, roughly 30% of the elements have yielded at temperatures lower than 100 degrees centigrade, whereas CS simulations show a more gradual trend of yielding. To investigate the impact of inclusion size and volume fraction, we create hypothetical microstructures of zirconia reinforced composites. The first group contained inclusions with 1000 micrometer in diameter and the second group contained inclusions with 200 micrometer in diameter. Then the temperature is raised to 200 degrees centigrade and this is repeated at three different volume fractions for each group and twice at each volume fraction. As before, the percentage of yielded elements in these simulations is extracted in order to identify any contributions from volume fraction or the inclusion size distribution on the percentage of yielded elements. For both inclusion sizes, an increase in volume fraction of inclusions is accompanied by an upward trend in the percentage of yielded elements. However, between the two groups, the one with the smaller inclusions gives a larger percentage of yielded elements, which is attributed to the increased contact area between inclusions and the matrix. Also, the higher slope for the smaller inclusions is attributed to the increase in the number of random locations where inclusions aggregate and therefore stress concentrations are caused. In conclusion, the present finite element model provided results that are in good agreement with previous results from experimental and analytical characterizations. Also, the present finite element model provides insight into the impact of various inclusion materials, and with this technique, the impact of the inclusion size and volume fraction is studied for zirconia inclusions. In the next video, we will examine the development and application of 3D finite element simulation of these composite microstructures. To find out more about this study, please follow the links provided in the description. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel to receive updates and remember to share your comments, questions and suggestions.